somewhere although at the moment it's all about tracking Tingana she's literally walking the exact route apparently that he was taking just now so I'm pretty sure she's moving in that direction right so let's carry on and just see I think Tingana must be here somewhere because her body language has changed now. She's become a lot more alert and a lot more kind of aware of what's going on. And I can see a vehicle up ahead of me, which I think is the one that is sitting with Tingana at the moment. There comes the cub as well. How beautiful is this? Just in an open area, leopards strolling through, not just one, but two of them. A third leopard up ahead. Is the cub chasing something? Uh, probably squirrels or lizards knowing it it's a busy little thing this and I've watched it chasing squirrels just now and I'm sure lizards are part of the game too now shadow will probably call the cub back at some point once she realizes that it's not following her she'll make a little squeak and grunt and that will mean that the little cub will come back into this area oh this is getting very thick in here now I suppose not very thick but it's just difficult to negotiate Um, I'm trying to work out how I'm going to go to where Tingana is because I think Tingana is just on the other side here somewhere. So I just want to try and see. Maybe we'll just stop here. Oh, here's Tingana right here. So there they are. They're both together. So Tingana's here. I don't know where the cub's gone. The cub's gone behind us somewhere. It's just coming now. Three, oh, there it is. Hello, little one. Where have you been bounding off to? So once again, all three of them are together, which is just insane. So it is so cool to see this. It is not every day that we're going to see three leopards in one spot. Let's see if she comes back. Can hear there's a lot of snarling and growling going on at the moment. Philip, you're wondering what is the history in with regards to the male leopards that have held this area? Well, Philip, I mean, there's not really too much of a history in terms of a bloodline. There's, it's not all males that are related that have held this area. It's not quite like the females. The females have a much more kind of intriguing history than the males. But if you want to know which males were dominant in this section, so first, let's start at Tingana, and then we'll just go backwards. So Tingana, before Tingana was in Vula, that was here and he arrived in the northern Sabi Sands in around 2010 and then started to really dominate the Juma area from about two th end of 2011 beginning 2012 just after Mafufanyan died so Mf and, and Jambilo Jordan so those two were also around for a long period of time before them there was another Jordan male and before that I'm not quite sure it's before my time to be honest so that's as far back as the lineage as I know but none of those males as far as we know are related in, and in terms of where they come from and Vula comes from way down in the south Tingana we're not sure where he came from um, and then Mofufinyan also I think he came from Ottawa's side if I'm not mistaken so it's it's difficult to know where a lot of these these leopards come from and if there is any sort of matching DNA I think it's why this whole Panthera project to see where the paternal kind of um, patterns are and what's going on in terms of DNA breakdown is so interesting because maybe our males are related in some way maybe there's a situation where we think the males are not related in this area but they are it would be interesting to know so but that's as far back as I can remember as so, I mean that's now four male leopards territories back and that spans as probably now about I would say 10 years roughly It'd be interesting to know I know some of you have been watching for 10 years so who was the dominant male when you first started watching would be interesting to know I know that Mufufinyan came in fairly early on there and then like I say Jordan and then Yambilo Jordan those two were also around so It'll be interesting to know exactly which male was first dominant when the wild earth first started. I, I would hazard a guess it's one of those that I mentioned to start with. But Tingana is relaxing. Shadow and Cub are still moving off in to the distance and carrying on. So I don't know if they're going to stop. I think I'm going to sit with Tingana a little bit longer and just see where they go. They might come back this way. But while we kind of catch our breath a little bit, we're going to try and give 
Umara a chance to shine and see if they've shaken off the gremlins. Hopefully it will work and we'll see you all in a little bit. Hello again everybody. So we're sitting with the three marsh breakaway lionesses. No, it's not. No, wait, there's four lionesses here. Wait, now I'm confused because let me stand by. There's four lionesses and then there's one female that's sitting in the grass with three very young cubs. Now we know that the marsh breakaway lioness, or one of them has got new cubs. So I wonder if, it's not hard to say. And we're in the area that they like to move away and move around. But I wonder who else has joined here. This is actually quite interesting. Now I don't know what pride lions we're looking at. There goes the little ones. They're tiny too. They're so young. They must only be, be about maybe three months old. Just over three months. They are so precious. Look at them trying to run through the grass there. Now I'm confused. Now I actually don't know who we have because normally the marsh breakaway is three lionesses with seven cubs, four older ones and then three new ones. So I wonder if those two females that are often on, her, on their own have maybe joined up this morning? Maybe it's different cubs? I have absolutely no idea, but I have not seen these cuties before. Oh, you just know that they're going meow, meow, and you see them snarling. Oh, there we go. Look at them running through the grass. That's so cute. Their little legs. That must be mom. They're way too excited to get back to this female. And she seems to be slightly more tolerant of them too. She's not snarling at them or ignoring them. That is very, very cute. Oh, it's a pity we're so far away because that sound would be so lovely to hear. I miss hearing young lion cubs moaning. But uh, I don't know what's going to happen now. They just tried to catch some war dogs but failed miserably. Not surprising though. We often see the warthogs give the lions a slip, actually quite a few times in fact. But they're definitely hungry and they're looking for something. But it is starting to warm up quite a bit now and there doesn't seem to be any prey right in the vicinity. I think they're going to have to move out of this area. They've got up and they were running quite a bit so all the topi that were standing up on termite mounds have all seen them now and they were alarming a little bit earlier. So all the animals around here are aware that there are lions about and that everybody needs to tread lightly and be very careful to not get themselves into any sticky situations. Oh, those little lines are so sweet. You can see she's listening out and very attentively this morning. And she's probably the most hungry, especially if she has got, if these are her cubs and she's suckling them. Having a little scratch while oh, they're sitting down in the grass. That was very cool. I don't think they're going to stay here for particularly long. Like I said, it's getting warm. So they're going to probably move to the tree line, which is not too far away. And then hunker down and maybe try again a bit later. Or maybe as they walk there, maybe they flush something out of the tree line. An impala, anything really. Maybe a warthog. I think they're just catching their breath now. Now the little cubs are on the run to the next lioness. Careful. Oh, they're naughty at this age. They think they're so big and strong. You can see that other lioness is watching carefully now. Are you going around to them or are you walking away from them? Michael, you're wondering what happened to those tiny little lions that I had the other day? And you're wondering if these are the same ones? Uh, no, no, it's on the other side of the river. We're in the triangle that was in the Masai Mara National Reserve. I uh, only ever saw them once. Manu and Scott went and she said that they just moved the den just slightly further through the th thickets onto the other side of the drainage line. And they saw them, and then they haven't been seen again. But we also haven't really been down that way for quite some time. So they're probably still around somewhere. 
And it was a very busy section though. Lots of cheetah, big male lions, lots of lionesses, lots of hyena. So even, the, you know, the, realistically the chances that those youngsters are still alive are still quite slim. But you never know. And when we go over to that side, we will go and check around. But I think she would have moved her den quite a few times since we were last there. But I just don't know which pride of lions we're looking at now. Now I'm very confused. But between the Ngamas, the marsh breakaways, and these two lionesses that roam around here in the marsh, it really wouldn't surprise me if they all just met up constantly. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's very, very far down the line. They would have all been one pride, and they've all just broken up. And It's so interesting. I'd love to go back like 50 years and know the know the sort of um, happenings of this area and what prides were around I think it would be quite interesting but I don't know if they were studied 50 years ago I don't know how for how long they've been following some of these prides of lions very calm out here a few birds chirping but that's really it very, very peaceful. Laughing doves, turtle doves, all sorts of doves calling this morning. Now, Cheryl, you, you're trying to figure out how far away we are from these lions. Um, I would say about 60 meters or so, somewhere around there. Go, you can see. We're not particularly close, but we're not really too far away either. It's sort of, it's actually quite a nice distance to be from from lions. A bit close for if they were to start hunting now, but they've come, to, you know, they've moved towards us. They're moving in this direction. Uh, ideally, out here, I mean, you want to you want to be sitting far away. Sabi sand is hard though because it's so dense. You end up being on top of the animal, but they don't seem to mind it as much yeah? But it's always good to to watch the hunt from a distance, and if they come towards you, well, then that's fantastic. Then you can just sit still and enjoy. It's actually just very nice to sit and listen to all the sounds and try and pick, you know, hear what the lions are hearing. Now, Nikki, you're wondering if all the lionesses would uh, protect these cubs. Uh, yeah, to an extent. Obviously, mom's going to be most protective over them. But if somebody came charging in, you'll probably find that the females will stick together. It also just depends if it means that their lives in the end are going to be on the line and they could run the risk of becoming injured or being killed. Uh, they do know that they can have more cubs. And in the end, they'll just say, okay, you win and move off, which is quite sad. But they will try their absolute best to defend their youngsters but it's a tough life it really is hard mom's also got to make that decision as when to, when to give up which must be a terrible decision to have to make so you see that a lot when male new male lions come in and kick out the the previous coalition members and that's a never never nice to see when there is a pride takeover and there are lots of young cubs around They're very quiet. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm wondering where are they are going to go? I think you should go lay in the shade and maybe move out into the open. Anyways, we'll stay with these cats for a little bit longer and see what they get up to. I'm going to send you back on board with Rolf, who's having the time of his life in the Mara. Sitting with on the Kenyan side of things, 
and uh, while I was sitting watching them we had a lady that pulled up and she's got her aerial on top of the roof for telemetry and I checked her and it seems she's from Michigan State University and they're studying the hyenas here so we had a little bit of a chat about particular and she says that it's it's more or less 75 individuals in this clan and um, I was actually at one female in particular and she looked extremely obese and almost like she's pregnant and you know I've never seen a pregnant hyena and the lady from the university she said yes you won't see a hyena that is pregnant because they almost don't look any different so then I said well what's going on here because this hyena that I spotted and, and she's just lay down in the grass now with good reason uh, and we'll hopefully get a glimpse of her but she is absolutely obese and it seems that she's probably take down, taken down something during the night and she's flattened it all on her own because it is apparent that she's one of these subordinate females and and so if um, she let the rest of the group know she wouldn't have had any at all So, I'm going to sit here and hopefully we get another sight of her and then we can show you how fat she is with her stomach nearly dragging on the ground. But let's go across uh, to our lovely leopard shadow back in South Africa. Oh my god. Now, it is very cool to see, but little cub has caught itself a baby scrub hair. So, we didn't see, we just saw a scrub hair come bursting out the bush past us. Shadow, I think, was the one that first caught up with it, and then she let it go for this little one to come and grab it. So, you can see it's got a little scrub hair between its paws there. It's just opening up the stomach now, so it managed to grab it, and has, I don't even know if that is still dead, that little scrub hair. Shame, I hope it is. Either way, it's been mangled a little bit, but it seemed like the ears moved a little bit. I don't know, hopefully it's not alive because the poor thing is being bitten and chewed. But it's now, I think, dead and is no longer alive. And so she's just going to tuck in and start feeding on it at the moment. So it's, unfortunately, we missed the best part or the chase of this whole thing. I suppose it's always sad when an animal dies. So, you know, if those of you that are a little squeamish, probably now is the best time to look away because she's going to just crunch it all down. Now, in a small scrub here like this, there really isn't going to be too much worry about going through everything. Even at her age as a small cub, a year old cub, her bone structure and her jaw power is strong enough for her to crunch through all of those little bones. So she'll eat everything there. There will be nothing left of that. And I can tell you now that Shadow won't even get a even a morsel of this. This will be all the cub. She'll eat everything. Funny enough, when they chased it, it actually went towards the adult went towards Tingana and almost ended up in the same situation. But luckily, Tingana was a bit sleepy and kind of just missed it as it came past. Well, a very warm welcome to those of you that have just joined us on this broadcast. We are coming to you live from South Africa with one of Africa's most elusive cats and a very special sighting that we've had of them this morning. So we have a young leopard, which is about a year old, that you can see is tucking into a kill. It's just caught a baby scrub here, which is a type of rabbit, and it is now starting to tuck in. Now, I was saying that we are coming to you live, which means that you can ask lots and lots of questions if you have any, and you can just post them in the comments section below and we'll try and answer as many as possible. Now what makes this sighting unique is not just because there's a year old leopard that has managed to kill a baby scrub hare, but in the background there is a mother leopard that is not far so she's just tucked up in the thickets behind. You can just see her breathing in, in the background there. And not very far from here is also a male leopard. So it's been an insane morning where we've had three leopards together. It's very uncommon to see male leopard with female and cub all together in one sighting. And they've been following each other around. And now that this little one has made this kill and is eating, the crunching of those little bones might cause the male leopard to come back into this area and join again. And so we're very excited 
excited to see if maybe there will be three of them and we can show all of you the three together a little bit later but this little one has done super well to grab this little meal Razali, you say hello from California. Well, I'm glad that you've joined us and hopefully you'll enjoy seeing the beauty of these little spots in action. And it's amazing because this little one is still learning how to be a leopard. It hasn't quite gotten there. It's still with mom. And so mom is slowly but surely teaching it how to go about killing. And so what happened in this is that the scrub hair ran and the mom actually was the one that caught up with it and then kind of pinned it and released it for the little one to learn how to hunt. So she's teaching this little one how to hunt now and and how to successfully kill its own prey items and it seems to be working. Megna, you're asking is it a family? So yes it is, the, the male leopard that is around is the father of this particular cub and then obviously the female leopard is the mother but in leopard dynamics you will not see a male and leopard spending much time together so male leopards are solitary and, and female leopards are solitary unless they have a cub and you'll find that they walk around and only will they interact generally when there's a carcass around or if there is a mating opportunity this morning neither of those things happened we had the male leopard we found him early in the morning and he was walking and he started to vocalize and he started to make a lot of noise and he makes this sawing rasping sound and as he was doing that it became very obvious that there was something else around and he kept staring into the bushes and calling and calling and calling and out popped this female with her little cub and the three of them joined together and so it's very seldom that you see a female with a cub approaching a male like that when there's no carcass or anything that sort of attracts her to that area. I think what she's doing though is because the territory we're in at the moment used to be her mother's and her mother died recently and has left this or is no longer around we don't know what actually happened to her but she has left this vacant area and so this female with this cub and her sister are trying to come in and take over this territory and so I think with the male calling like that this female is just making sure that it is the same male that is the father of this cub and also reassuring that male that she is in this area and telling that male I'm here don't worry about me and if you pick up my scent I am the same female that you've mated with and this little cub if you come across it is your little offspring so don't kill it so that's why there's probably this interaction that's taking place Kim, you're wondering if I think mom is in estrus. It's possible. This particular female does often mate very early on when she has a cub. Her previous cub that she had, she was also mating at around a year old. So it is very early. Normally leopards will only start mating at around 14 months um, after they've had their last cub. So it is a little early, but it is very possible. I think it's more a situation that she's reassuring the male that she's here and this cub is his. So when a male is in an area and he sees an un a female that he doesn't recognize in that particular section or there's a, from a distance sees a you know a smaller leopard he might think it's a cub from another female and, and he might then kill it to bring that female back into estrus and so i think more than anything she's just reassuring that male that it's just her she's the same leopard she's just in a different area in a newer area and the cub is still her off, well his offspring and that there's no need to worry and you can see she's got a little bone stuck in her throat there so she's being a bit of a glutton and is eating too fast and so she's got a bone that's stuck in and that's why she's just trying to kind of work those neck muscles and regurgitate a little bit to try and bring that bone out and make sure that it doesn't kind of choke her in any way but that little scrub here is almost finished now and she's pretty much eaten most of it I think in fact there's only probably a little leg left and it just goes to show how quickly they can put well, swallow meat you'll find that there's a situation where they that scrub here was whole not even two minutes ago and it's now been completely destroyed right so now we're going to carry on with our safari it's the end of our broadcast for now but we do do safaris twice a day so we'd love to see you join us on safari live for our two daily broadcasts it's been an absolute pleasure having you and i forgot to mention that my name is tristan and also on camera today we had fergus so it's been lovely to have you all and we'll leave you with the last visual of our leopards and we'll carry on our safari on wildsafarilive.com Right, so I think 
that is the end of that broadcast but we're still here and it's amazing how that little one has just scoffed that all down so a little scrub here did not last long at all but I'm sure the cub is feeling better about life and is really starting to kind of settle I think for the day now Tingan is not far now hopefully everybody is going to be in the same place this afternoon although it seems as though shadow is up and moving so while we kind of follow this family around let's go back across to Taylor McCurdy in the Masai Mara Oh, so we've still got our precious little lions that are walking towards us now. They are so sweet. Little feet are all wet from walking through the grass saturated with dew. My goodness, this lioness is walking right past us. <laughs> so cool. And see, they're quite happy to move around and are not too bothered by us. I'm not sure what these little cubs are going to do. Let's see how they feel about this. And they're not too sure. It's okay, little ones. They'll get used to the cars eventually. That's not too bad. You can see the adults don't care at all. But there they're going. Now, what we won't do is I'm not going to drive right behind them. There's one lioness still coming. Uh, the reason why I'm not going to follow them from behind, because if they're running past the car and we're still, uh, to tail them is going to be not pleasant. And it's only going to upset the adults and, and scare the youngsters. So once they go past, we'll let them go around and we'll take our time in trying to relocate them. We might have to take a different route. Uh, just because of their behavior. Normally, I wouldn't mind following lions with the young cubs. Uh, but, you know, we're going to have to keep on the move because they're keeping on the move. So we're going to have to go all the way around. But we'll catch up with them eventually. There's the last lioness just about to walk past the car. Well, she's going past the car now. There she goes. Very cool. Right. Let's keep going. You know, they're a bit jumpy to keep tailing them. So we'll go the scenic way around and eventually get around to them at some point. But very cute nonetheless. They're very nice to see those little lions. Hi, lions. I don't know how long it will take to get around. Uh, Trying to think where the road is going to come out. Mm. Matthew, you're wondering if I think lions have a better success rate in the Mara or um, in the Sabi Sand? Um, I don't know, I think they have a tougher life out here. There's a lot more lions around. And I think that, unfortunately, a lot of those cubs don't make it to adulthood. It's a much of a muchness, though, because the leopard population is also a lot higher in the Sabi sand, so there's a lot more, well, there's more variety of predators that would maybe take them out. Leopards would definitely kill lion cubs. And then, yeah, it's a tough one. I think it's much of a muchness, really. I think it's probably about the same. I don't know any statistics. I haven't been in the Mara long enough to have, to give a, an expert opinion that I've um, sort of developed. It would all just be stuff that I've read, unfortunately. It'll take, it takes years and years and years of guiding in a particular area before you know you can really start giving answers like that. But there would be people out there who have been spending years and years with the animals and doing research on them and following specific prides for a very long time. We keep bouncing around and so you don't get to stay with one particular pride for a long time. And with restrictions like no off-roading and that type of thing, you miss a lot. You can't stick on them and not everywhere is accessible. to go a long way around I'm afraid okay well we're gonna try and get back around and see how it goes Ralph is enjoying the hyena this morning one of my other favorite animals I wonder if he's got a large clan or if it's just one on its own thanks Taylor yes we actually do have a rather large clan here um, as I said the lady that stopped next to us from Michigan State University. She said it's more or less 75 individuals and it's looking like a small male. 
but um, quite interesting to note that you won't really be able to see if hyena are pregnant and they do gorge themselves if they if they get themselves uh, some meat and in this particular instance not with this young male but there's a female lying in the grass just in front of us and she uh, she looks like she's eaten a, a whole topi all on her own and I'm not surprised that she's lying up in the grass now um, and the lady said that she is one of the subordinate females so one of the lowest ranking of all of them and that's why they sort of exhibit that kind of behavior if they bring something down by themselves they'll then eat all of it because if they don't and they allow the other members of the clan to to come in uh, they'll flatten it and chase her off it so she'll quickly eat it all on her own and then uh, and then she's in the business so yeah she's looking very overweight at present uh, as I say it looks like she's eaten the whole topi all on her own but um, right, I think we're gonna start up we're just gonna head down towards the river a little bit maybe we'll be lucky and we can spot uh, some of the paradise pride who knows I'm sure we'll see some hippo down there there was a request yesterday for baby hippo that I didn't find we did find hippos yesterday but no babies so maybe we'll see some of those and it seems like everybody's been having lots of excitement this morning there being the cubs the, the, the shadows cub hunting in Juma and Taylor with the lions on this side I've been sitting with hyena so it's been rather a good morning I would say And so in this area, this is where we head towards the Inselbergs. These are the Inselbergs here on the right hand side, obviously volcanic. And um, I, would, I would say that that's probably a good area to find leopard. So as I make my way down towards the river, let's go back over to Tristan with some grooming leopards. Well indeed, Shadow and Little One are really having a good session of grooming and it's been so sweet to watch them. They, you know, and sometimes Shadow can be a little grumpy with their cub, especially because the little one bounces around all over the show, but after they scrub her meal, it's now time to get that little cub clean, get off any blood that it's got on it or bits of fur from the scrub hair. And so Shadow is giving it a really good groom and it's just so nice to see the two of them kind of lounging together. It's starting to get nice and warm as well, which means that I think the two of them hopefully are going to settle in this particular area. I don't think they're going to go too far. Well, that's what I'm hoping anyway. And also Tingana is not too far away. So hopefully this afternoon it will be the three of them again. Although little one has decided otherwise. It wants to go now and investigate other things and see what else is out there and see what else is happening. So <laughs> little one is just coming past us. How cool is this little thing? You are lots of fun, little one. And I believe it's already made its first kill, so and I know the scrub here we did kill it, but I'm talking about rather larger kills. I believe it managed to grab a impala, young baby impala, a few weeks ago, and unfortunately it was stolen by the wild dogs, but at least it's got that instinct and it seems to be mastering the art, which is invaluable. And it's crazy to think that this is the same size that little Shongile basically was left at as well when she had to go off on her own. So it's a tough life and hopefully sh this one will be allowed to stay with mom a little longer just to develop a bit more than what she is. She's still very small for her age. I mean, she's, I would say she's even smaller than what Shongile was because Shongile kind of was small but grew quite quickly in that last sort of in those... I would say from a year to sort of 15 months she grew a lot whereas this little one is still tiny 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 and you wouldn't think that she would be able to kind of survive on her own but it seems as though she's making her way in and obviously Shadow is still around and so she's going to hopefully have a good crack at it and be able to develop a little more before she's then independent. The great news about all of this is that she is a little girl and so that means hopefully if Shadow and Tandy settle where they want to settle that we'll have another female in the area which is always good news and it also it means that it's another member of the royal lineage that is in the area and another female and we desperately need them with Shongile seemingly missing 
Karula gone then it's just left to Tundi Shadow, Kuchava and now this little one and who knows what Tundi's new one is it looks like Tundi's new one might be a little female as well I'm not 100% sure I checked the footage and it's very difficult to say whether it's male or female but it looks like it might be a little female anyway it's, it's nice to have at least some females around that can continue the legacy Nick, I'm not sure if Hosanna's encountered Shadow, definitely not Tandy as far as I know, I mean Hosanna hasn't been on Juma for weeks now, um, we've been seeing him a lot on Chitwa and south of our boundary but not really much on Juma itself, so I don't think he's really come across Tandy too much but Shadow I would imagine he has a few times, um, I know they had a kill together at one point, must have been just before the TV show, so it was, it was about 3 or 4 days, maybe a little bit more before the TV show which was last Friday so it's just over a week and a half ago that Hosanna was seen with Shadow we had that sighting with Shadow and Hosanna as well on Chitwa just before the TV show so they seem to meet up every now and then and the cub is often around as well so Hosanna seems to be the kind of big brother that doesn't really or little brother that doesn't actually do any damage to the, the cubs and seems as though Shadow is fairly tolerant of him much like Tundi was although I think Tundi now is a very different kettle of fish I don't think she's going to be any have any tolerance for Hosanna anywhere near that little one at the moment be interesting to see though and it seems as though Hosanna and Tamba both of them got a very clear message because since Tandi has been denning neither one of them has set foot anywhere near Juma and has not come onto this area at all which means that there's something that's kind of keeping them away you would think that both of them would move here and, and maybe they've run into that other leopard maybe it's you know a situation where Tingana is starting to push them a little bit who knows but it seems as though Hosanna just lives on Chitwa and Nidalgari and Tamba south of that and both of them used to frequent this area a lot and I, something has to have caused them not to come up into this area and I have a sneaky suspicion that Tandi has been very aggressive towards Hosanna and, and that's why he's pushed a little bit further south to where it's shadow and, and maybe a little couple of spaces where there's not too much going on up on that mile, mile boundary with females but how cool is this look at the two of them doesn't she look happy well done girl you've done very well to have raised this little one it just goes to show you if she can be in an area where there's a dominant male and there's, there's not too many fluctuations of males then she's not a bad mother and she is able to raise her cubs successfully also she would have learnt a lot of valuable lessons from a lot of the litters that she's lost over the past few years and, and so she would have some mistakes that she's made she's probably tried to not make those again and that seems to be proving successful because her success rate now later in life has been a lot better than it was when she was younger she certainly struggled in the first few years compared to what Tandy did but Tandy had a lot more stable dynamic with the males than what um, Shadows had But we certainly haven't had a sighting like this in a while of these two just grooming and playing and being together and as long as what we've had today. I mean, we've had the whole drive, the two of them. Well, no, don't bite each other. You were just being sweet to each other. Enough now. <laughs> Well, that didn't end according to plan. I suppose it had to end somehow, so I feel like I feel like mom had to just lay down the law. There's enough grooming now. I'm tired. It's hot. I just want to lie down. You go and find yourself somewhere else to sleep. You, you clean. I've cleaned your face after your meal. Now it's time for you to go and do your own thing again. Carol and Jay, you're wondering whether or not this cub that is now near a year old, does it have a name now? So no, not yet. It, it hasn't. And the reason why is because it's only... Oh, it's, it's having a bit of a tough time with pugnacious ants. Careful, those ants will bite you on the nose, little one. But um, it's only a year old in Jan, so the, you know, the other rangers in the area will probably start to think about naming her in January. Um, we unfortunately won't have any part in that. We, you know, we're not really part of the, the, the sort of land owners, if you want to call it, so guides that have property and, and, and also this cub was not born on Juma. So there's very little chance of us 
putting any names forward that will be accepted but you never know we'll see i mean the rangers meetings normally these things are decided so we'll see but hopefully in january it will get a name so it doesn't have a name just yet um james r refers to it as barbara which i don't know why james decided barbara was a name so he refers to it as barbara which is now coined the phrase that a lot of our viewers use that hashtag not barbara so we <laughs> kind of call her not barbara sometimes and it just depends on who is guiding at the time but anyway it seems as though they are going to move now and start moving down into the drainage line and off now Chris you're wondering if leopards purr no they don't so they are not like domestic cats and it's why they're in the panthera part of the lineage so they're not in the felines they're in panthera and that's because they roar rather than actually purr but you can see they're going up onto a mound on the other side there now so i think probably if they disappear over the top of that i'm not going to carry on there's there's a couple other vehicles that want to come into the sighting and we've been absolutely spoiled this morning so i don't want to overstay our welcome and we also want to let other people have a chance at seeing them what are you doing are you playing you two now let's see if there's any animosity now and growling and hissing or is it going to be fine no it's going to be fine and off they go down the other side so like i say i think as they disappear and we watch those two little white tails drop down into the riverbed we're going to move on out and allow somebody else to come and have a little look we'll try and come and follow up this afternoon in fact actually we'll probably send scotty to follow up so he can get to spend some time and while we do that let's go to ralph who i think has got some tall spotty creatures Yes, we went down to the river and uh, very quiet down there. We didn't even see any hippos. So we've turned around and uh, made our way back up the road towards where we were watching those hyena. And we've spotted a couple of bull giraffe. Always good for a little stop and view of them. As they move with the inselbergs in the background. Lovely setting this, and you can see them ruminating, chewing the cud, chasing flies away with their ears and their tail. And a little yellow-throated long claw calling just in front of us. don't know if you can hear his lovely little call here. Now, if you watch closely, you'll actually be able to see when that giraffe swallows, now wait a little bit, you might see the ball being regurgitated. There it comes, and there he chews. Very nice to watch with giraffe. You can actually see the whole process. The white on the back of the ears. One of those follow me signs that we talk about. Very graceful moving up towards the Little termite mounds there, he's got his eye on that other male. Very peaceful morning, a little bit of a breeze coming through. And, uh, well, it seems everybody else has been having all the action. And uh, yesterday I had a little bit of action with the lions as well. But uh, this morning it's a nice, nice calm morning on my side. Uh, I think I'm going to head back towards those hyena and see what they have been getting up to. Because they're always up to no good. Very interesting to watch. So let's head up towards them. The, the longer we sat with them, the more we started to see. So I think eventually we were at about 25 individuals. Now Michael, you're wondering if the guiding techniques are different uh, in the Maasai Mara to that of in the Sabi Sands? Well, theoretically, no. It, sh it shouldn't be any different because it's, uh, it's, it's the same wheel that we're turning. But um, the terrain is, is quite a bit different. So you might be driving a lot bigger distances here. And one of the things that we're not doing as much here as we would do in Juma or in the Sabi Sands is checking the tracks because 
What obviously we do look at the tracks here, but they're not an indication then of which way we need to be driving or moving. Because in the Sabi sands, you pick up on nice fresh uh, um, leopard tracks or lion tracks, and you see which way they're moving, and you're obviously going to leapfrog quickly and see if they're inside the block or if they've gone through the block. And so, in that way, very quickly get closer to where the predators are. Now, what we do here is it's more of a scanning uh, sort of trying to find the animals as opposed to the actual physical tracking of them and and working out where they've gone so it's because the the openness of it here lends to it being a little bit different in terms of how you approach finding the the prides of lions or or leopard per se so for leopard you would just need to frequent the, the forested areas along the river and potentially near to the inselbergs but it also depends on where the roads lead you here because in this section in the Mara Triangle uh, we've got a lot of the black cotton soil so we're not allowed to off-road so if the animals are a bit away from the road it's it's unfortunate and it's not the same as in Juma where you can off-road almost everywhere especially for big five uh, to get in for the view or if you're following wild dogs etc you may you may go through and bash trees down and all of that but the terrain is different, the vegetation is different, and so it does lend for slightly different guiding, but the, the basic backbone remains the same. So, yes, there is a slight difference, but obviously the way that we, we present everything would be very similar. Heading back down towards the river a little bit here, and after that then back up towards where those hyena were, there was a, a large group of impala and some buffalo here, so maybe we'll stop and just have a little look-see. Here they are coming up ahead. It's a lovely setting that uh, I'll stop there now with the, with the palm trees in the background. So it leaves a very tropical feel to it. The wind's picking up quite a bit now. So uh, might have quite a windy day today. We'll stop here. This is a lovely big group of impala with one male, so he's done himself pretty well. group of impala that with the palm trees in the background and that river on vegetation a nice group of impala all the ladies with only one male and it's nice to see in the light like that that beautiful counter shading of theirs very dark on top light underneath the white stomach and a good looking male that is indeed massive horns i still can't get over the size of the horns of the impala in in the masai mara it's uh, it's quite incredible of that and all of them all the male impala i'm seeing are the biggest horns i've ever seen on an impala it's quite impressive and they're all looking in good shape nice rich grass coming through so everybody's been getting their condition nicely tuned and male just making sure that all the females are kept in line kept in line Josh, you're commenting that this guy, he's got a lot on his plate, and the bigger group the females, the more he's got to work to keep them all together. So it's not always the best idea to have So it's quite difficult for males when when they've got
females like this, it's um, it's obviously a whole lot more energy for him to be able to keep them together. So it's quite important, I would say, that to to choose more of a mid-range sized group of females, because the more you have, the more energy you need to expend. It's not always the best for him. So while we sit here and enjoy this peaceful little scene with his impala, let's head over to Taylor, who's got a little doggy for you. I'm with my friends, everybody, and the fourth one has just come to join us. It's our four favorite jackal pups. Hello. And that one on the right was barking just now, right next to the car. It was so precious, I was laughing at it. There we go, just greeting one another. Yes, I'm going to bite you on your schnoz. Oh, that's so cute. We're wondering where the fourth one was because there were just three of them here sitting on the road and I'm happy to see them all reunited now and hopefully they'll give us a little bit of a play. It's interesting to see how social they actually are. Well, they are so, they're not tiny. They are so sweet. Look at that big yawn. Oh my goodness, this has to be, I don't, I'm sorry everybody. I think that these jackal are way cuter than those little lion cubs. I know lions are amazing and they're so precious, but you know, to sit with these jackal really just makes me so happy. I actually cannot start smiling now. It's so sweet. the vehicle no one's going to call again because that was really quite funny oh sorry everybody it seems as though there's many gremlins out to get the Mara team this morning don't you go with me and my jackal I'll be very upset about that oh they are so precious they literally sat just a few meters away from the car and I would love to see them play. I don't think I've ever seen jackals playing before. I'd imagine they'd play around like puppies would and chase each other or just like how we see lions and, and leopards reacting. Maybe not as... stalking and pouncing be the foxes of the savannah. I suppose you could say it. I, I think they have a very much the same uh, ecological role as a fox would. Uh, Now, unfortunately, it seems poor Ralph is being plagued by these gremlins at the moment, and Taylor too, by the sounds of things. But you can see Tingana is still sitting, watching. Shadow is still vocalizing heavily to our western side. It sounds like they're actually moving back towards us. So they disappeared where we left them, and it sounds like they're actually coming back towards Tingana. That's why he's popped his head up now. You can see he's kind of just looking around, and I wonder if they're not going to make another appearance with him. So we're just sitting in case they do. I can hear her vocalizing here calling the cub quite a bit so i was just wondering if they are going to head in this direction you can also see he's kind of looking but I mean, look at the size of his head and neck it's so different if you compare that to the side profiles of shadow and even the cub they have these kind of very petite heads and this little neck that goes down whereas he is just this absolute brute of a leopard in terms of his neck area and that's like i say what is one of the most impressive features of tingana is just how big his julep and neck area is he almost doesn't even have a chin it just kind of goes from the end of his teeth to his chest it's really not much else there so it is pretty incredible to see him from the side profile now i can hear them calling again it's distant and faint but they it sounds like they're just to our western side it's not far though and it's an it's, 
I think we'll find that they might make an appearance again. She's calling, proper calling though, every now and then. So maybe it's to call the cub, I'm not sure, or it's to call and find where Tingana's gone. And I think she thought maybe Tingana would follow her, but you can see our boy is tired. He's had a rough couple of days. He's dealt with his son in the form of Hosanna. Then he's dealt with the Birmingham Mail line. Now he's got a shadow and the cub. So there's all, all a lot of responsibility on one leopard's shoulders. It's difficult to... 99 problems, exactly. Shame, Tingana. There we go. How beautiful is that, though? Isn't that the quintessential, like, male leopard under a bush in the shade, just kind of staring over his shoulder? I know the light's not great, but it's just, I don't know, there's something about that picture that when you think about a leopard, that's how you would think of it, too. in my mind, anyway. That's how I always think of a male leopard, is kind of just sitting there, peering over his shoulder on a termite mound or a low sort of point. And we're a little bit lower than he is, so it's very pretty. Roll, you're wondering whether or not leopard coats change with various terrain. Not as far as I know. So, I mean, most of the leopards that I've seen, even the Kalahari leopards, they have a very similar coat to what you see from these guys. Maybe the, the depth of the gold might change a little bit, but not really. I mean, it's, it's, it's very similar. I've seen leopards in the Kalahari and they look pretty much in coloration and spot pattern very similar to what we get here. They have slightly different faces and slightly different eye colors, but the actual color of their coat is very similar. So you might find that, that leopards that spend a lot more time in the, the mountainous areas might be slightly darker, or you might find ones in, in deep forest, rainforesty kind of sections, they might have a slightly darker coat, just helps them to blend a little bit. But for the most part, most of their coats are very similar shades of this kind of goldy yellow color that they have and, and there's not too much difference between the ones that you find here, the ones in the Mara, the ones in um, Zimbabwe, Botswana, they're all very similar in their coat colors. There are of course obviously unique individuals within systems so there are black leopards and there are leucistic leopards or strawberry leopards as they're known which have a little bit more of a white tinge to them so you know it's it's there is these kind of different but those are anomalies those are not because of an area that's just a genetic situation that's been caused and they and you know, have this other leucism which is you know lack of pigments or you have this i mean sorry white pigments or you have this situation where you have um, melanism which is the dark pigments that makes the black or strawberry leopards so that's the only differences but in terms of area <clears throat> no there's not too much of a change between the leopards coats hello boy now i can hear some vehicles and some franklins calling not far and driving so the vehicles aren't calling but they are driving and so i can hear them crunching bushes coming straight towards us so i think shadow and cub are about to make another appearance they should come from the left hand side the way that tingana is facing oh a little shoulder itch action uh, we hopefully will see them kind of coming in this direction i'm just trying to see where the cars are they're a little further away than I first anticipated, but maybe. Pachyderm, you're wondering if ants don't bother the leopard when they lie down. Yes, they do. It does happen from time to time that the ants will irritate them, and that's when sometimes a leopard will go up into a tree. Now, she's coming behind us on the road, so directly behind us. Please excuse the antennas as you go around. You can see that there is a leopard starting to move straight towards us again so she's coming back towards where Tingana is that's the cub and then shadow is just slightly to the right so there the two of them are coming back towards Tingana how ridiculous is this morning who would have thought that the, they would have sat together for this long a period that's what amazes me is it's not just that they've kind of come together and we've had this insane sighting it's now that it's carried on as long as it has and to have three leopards together is just absolutely ridiculous now I need to let some of the guys that have joined because these these guys are all sort of haven't seen Tingana yet. Mike, if you're interested, Tingana's here where I am sitting with me, so they're about to join him again. Um, so they've kind of missed him. He's watching them. Tingana's just watching them come past. I don't think they've seen him, to be honest. I think there's a situation where they maybe are a little bit hot and thirsty and they're going to come to this pan here. I'll just try and see where they're going, although they've stopped in the shade, haven't they? Yes, she's just looking around. Tingana's watching them from this side. So it just goes to show even the most sort of keen-eyed animals out here, the leopards, can sometimes not spot each other. 
Although I think she's seen him now. Let's just see. She's coming on my right hand side. Don't worry, Ferg. I'll tell you if she's coming this way. She's being uh, she's being a cool cat. I think they're going to come for water is what they're actually going to come for. But let's see. I'm going to just go forward to the water point. Tingana is just over here. They kind of are strolling past him. So let's just go to where there is water and maybe we'll get them drinking. Tingana's not moving. He's not interested at all at this stage. He's just sitting there taking it ever so casual. Hey guys. How pretty is that little one in amongst the green grass? That is very cool. You're going to have a little drink after your meal. Oh, look at the reflection. How cool is this? And look, now she's drinking as well. Now, this was all going to happen because I left my camera at home. This is why these things have happened. So if you ever want great sightings, remind me to leave my camera at home because this is the kind of things that happen every time I don't have a camera with me. It tends to just be ridiculous. So anyway, I mean, it's, it's epic for all of us to at least watch it and enjoy it and sometimes not having a camera is actually a good thing because you take it all in and you experience it through your own eyes rather than through an eyepiece sometimes so it's good to sometimes just put the camera away even if you do have it with you but there's a little reflection of the cub amazing and shadow drinking in closest to us little cub on the other side Oh, it doesn't get much better than what we've got this morning. We really have been spoilt, as Nikki says. So it's been a fantastic morning, that's for sure. Hey, Shadow. Have you not seen Tingana? How have you not seen him? Oh, look at that through the green grass. So good. I think she's going to lie down here. I think that's enough for the morning. It's hot. So they've had a drink. There we go. Right next to us. It can't get any better than that. So. I'm just trying not to move too much because you can see she's right over my shoulder. I want to turn the other way but I can't because unfortunately my legs go out the car and then she's going to probably growl at me and be upset with me so I have to keep my legs inside the car so I know I'm not supposed to turn this way. Sorry Fergus but it unfortunately is the way it is. Now Laura you're wondering if there's any breeze that can carry the scent. Yes there is a bit of a breeze that can carry the scent. She knows that Tingan is there. I'm sure she can see him from where she's sitting. I can see him from where we're sitting so if I can so can she but look at that isn't that just the most special thing two leopards out in the open lying completely without a single blade of grass in front of them at a pan oh it doesn't get better than this I've been in leopard heaven this morning it has been spectacular <coughs> told me that that he thinks that this is his best leopard sighting since he's joined Safari Live and I'm not surprised Fergus you have been spoiled this morning and so have I and so have all of you we've had the most ridiculous morning following these two cats and our big male who started it all off this morning hello girl oh look at this like i said when we are right next to them are they lying no more than i would say two meters from my right shoulder and she is completely relaxed i can't believe how much she's developed since those early months in june july when she used to see the car go scuttling off now she just lies right next to us as though there's not a care in the world it's amazing actually how it changes and how the process works and that's why it's important that we kind of start on Tundi's Cub early and, and the reason why she took so long is because it was left alone for such a long period of time that she didn't. So Tingana is just busy vocalizing at Shadow. I want to just go back quickly and just see what's happening on that side. Now that the little one is sitting here, maybe Shadow is going to take the opportunity to try and just quickly see. Let's just see. Let's just... Right, so Tingana is vocalized, Shadow is sitting, Cub is sitting, everybody seems to be fairly relaxed now and is taking it very easy. But what a way for us to finish our morning. So we're going to start heading back home now. It's going to be time for the Mara team to take over. Hopefully the gremlins will be gone and you'll be able to enjoy the extra bit of time. But from Fergus and myself, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you this morning. I hope every single one of you have loved every second of this. I certainly have and it's been amazing and hopefully it will continue this afternoon. So make sure that you're with us later, but we'll see you all a little bit later. Enjoy the rest of the Mara. Right everybody, so it seems 
ha you've been having an absolutely amazing time down with Shadow and the little cub and Tingana and it seems all very exciting. Now I haven't got something as, as, as exciting as that but we do have some crocodiles here on the Mara River and it's not all crazy excitement especially when you're watching crocodiles you generally are quite stationary but uh, nonetheless that's what's happening in the Mara River at present and it's always good just to stop next to the river see what's going on there's a, a lot of crocodiles here there's also a few hippos just off from them there's the lap wings running around They've been chasing the little plovers along the bank. Everybody vying or competing for the for the shoreline. And the hippos off to them as well. And but you see there with that crocodile with his mouth open, obviously thermoregulating, keeping cool while at the same time warming up. So a little bit of a double whammy there. cool while at the same time warming up all their rows of teeth sorry for the gremlins folks we are having technical difficulties up here in the Mara not sure if it's because it's a bit windy this morning maybe it's affecting our our internet there's not much I can do the tech guys however are working hard behind the scenes to make sure that we try and eliminate these black screens and these gremlins these gremlins five will rank uh, up in the top three to add too much to the action it seems everybody else has been getting the the lions and the, and the leopard and the little cub feeding on on scrub hair and all sorts so I'd, I think I need to actually go back uh, when we have finished and go and see uh, a little bit of the highlights of what happened this morning because for me it's been a little bit quiet uh, you get that on the jobs Sometimes it's crazy and other days it's just very quiet on your side but um, I think what I'm going to do now is we're heading back towards those hyena. So let's go and see what they're up to. Um, you never know, hyenas are always up to no good. Always interesting to go and watch. And, and what is quite interesting is that having chatted with, with that lady from the Michigan State University, um, got a little bit more insight into, into these particular hyena. And um, very political uh, are hyena clans, and uh, some individuals really go for it and, and tickle uh, our hyena clans. normally means that the youngster will then move into that position as well but then you do have individuals on the outskirts that sort of leave it to the others to fight out okay once again folks sorry for the intermittent black screens is um, always a problem but I, I have a feeling it might be to do with the with the wind sometimes you know when your internet dips goes down when it's windy but I'm a presenter I'm a ranger I'm a guide I'm no tech or IT specialist so I'll leave that to them but, uh, coming around the corner here yeah, heading back up towards the escarpment as you can see in front of us we've been looking at everything in between a cool morning still it hasn't heated up
Janine. Okay, so I'm not too far away from these hyena, but um, it'll take me a little while to get there. So in the meantime, let's go over to Taylor for an update. I wonder which clan you're with. Very exciting this morning that you're spending some quality time with the hyenas. I actually cannot wait for Ralph to head across the Mara River for the first time and go and visit that big clan near a governor's camp. I think he'll thoroughly enjoy them, especially with all the young cubs at the moment, although there's so many different clans around. But we sadly had to leave our jackals. They were so cute though, the gremlins just attacked us. Oh, those little things made my day today, especially with the way that one was yelping. It was so funny. Manu and I were just laughing uncontrollably at this little thing as it's sort of bark, howled and yelped all in one. It was the most bizarre sound that it was making. But what it did do is it brought the other jackal pup that was sitting and howled and yelped all in one. It was the most bizarre somewhere. Risi, you wondering uh, if there are any cheetah in this area? Uh, most certainly there are. I haven't seen a cheetah up this side though for, for quite some time. At one point there, were, there was a female that was moving on the base of their scrapman. Oh, sorry about that, the gremlins again. Uh, yeah, so basically she was moving around down on the escarpment. She had some cubs, but she's disappeared. We haven't seen her for, for a long time. So they definitely... ...to see as far as we were able to see. So there's only pockets of short grass at the moment. And so yeah, we go down to the border. We see the border boys. Uh, every now and then we see Kakenya towards uh, the Purungat Bridge around that area. So there's plenty of opportunities and, and it could quite rightly be one that's living up here. ...of the cars and avoids the vehicles. So uh, there's... Um, yeah, we could see a cheetah at any point. But at the moment, ...of the cars and avoids the vehicles. So... Uh, Oh no, that's very, very, very sad. I'm so sorry about it. Seems as though the gremlins have really, really been working hard at trying to tackle us today and it seems as though they're winning. Sometimes hard. the show he did an incredible job and he had uh, some serious spotted sightings which is very very cool i'm kind of envious but we got our cheetah ralph got his hyena it was all spectacular but that's just one of those things isn't it but don't worry we are going to have a sunset safari this afternoon so we'll hopefully make up for it with with many different critters too well, then you can all get some shut eye perhaps some sleep or perhaps you're going to work uh, but we hope you enjoyed what we did show you this morning on the sunrise safari again our biggest apologies but we'll be back so don't miss out jump on board this afternoon for the sunset safari